Starting engine checklist. Throttles are both at the idle position. And starting the CJ4 is different than starting any of the other Citations, uh, rather any of the other 525 model airplanes. Uh, there is no mechanical gate to pull the, uh, the power levers over. All you do is you hit the starter button right here, and then immediately thereafter, you hit the run button. That's it. There's nothing else to do, and uh, it makes operation quite a bit easier. So once we do that, we'll come over to the engine gauges and we'll verify that we've got a good start. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and, and start it up, and uh, we'll give the signal that we're spinning up. Number two, right-hand side. Could you check the right-hand side for me, make sure it's nice and clear? No, nobody run around there? Clear. Okay. And brakes are on. We've got number two spinning, and then I've got the run button. I've got N2 is good. At 11% N2, we get ignition and fuel flow, and we do have a light off. As we get light off, I'm going to come over here and make sure I've got N1 rotation, positive bolt pressure, and just monitor ITT to make sure we do not get past the red carrot. And doing so, we want to hold our finger on the disengage button just in case we have any anomalies during start. Okay, so we got the cyan marker that tells us the FedEx happy with the information that it's receiving. We're stabilized at 25% N1. ITT is good. Fuel flow is good. Temperatures N2. I'd say we got a good start. And uh, generators are also producing power. So after we've done that, we turn the avionics on. And we'll move right into engine number one. Spinning up number one, left engine turn. Make sure we got N2 rotation, we do. We hit the run button at 11%, we should get ignition. Boom, there's ignition. We got some fuel flow, we got a light off, and we're standing by for N1 rotation, and that's looking nice and healthy. Coming over here to ITT, standing by to disengage in case we have any anomalies during start. Okay, we got two good motors. The, green, uh, the, the cyan uh, markers, ITT stabilized. Fuel flow is good, pressures and temperatures are all good. Getting a little hot here, so let's go ahead and turn on the uh, climate control system so we can get the air conditioner running and uh, have a nice and cool, comfortable cabin as we go through the remainder of our checklist. Climate control is in normal. Passenger safety lights, we'll go ahead and turn turn that on. And uh, we'll turn the seatbelts on as well. All right, trims, we're gonna check our trims. We've got a couple tests to do here. We've got trim indicators are right here. I'm gonna verify that the indicator is moving as I move the trim hat. Now again, different than the previous generation citations, there is no mechanical wheel. It's all electric. So first I test this side. I want to make sure that the red button stops the trim. I want to check the co-pilot side as well. It's moving. Stop it with trim. And I also want to verify that the left-hand side can override the right, which it is kind of hard to see probably from where you're standing, but uh, it, it is centered. And we, want to, we have a backup uh, trim system, which I'm going to engage now. And we can, we can move the trim indicators up and down as necessary. So in case the, the primary fails here on the yoke, we have this backup system that we can, uh, we can run using this little toggle switch that's down here by my hand. I want to get it back up to the center location, disengage, make sure that cast method goes away, which it does, and that's, that's good to go. Our aileron and rudder trims are exactly where we want them to be. Flight control test, no different than any other airplane. We're going to go thumbs up, wing up, that's good. Pull it all the way back, thumbs up, wing up, that's good. Free movement on the rudder pedals, and we are good to go. Flight controls are free and correct speed brakes. Also different on this airplane versus the previous generation citations is the variable speed brake. And we have this large handle here that we can modulate the deflection of the speed brake. So I want to pull it down to here and then go to the ground spoiler position, and I've got one, two, three, four panels up on this side. If you could check on your side, we should have four panels up. Clear. And we have the, the ground spoilers and the no takeoff speed brake cast messages on. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back down. We wanna to go to the uh, flaps 15 position for takeoff. So we select it. My personal procedure is I hold my hand down on the, uh, the, the flap control until I verify I've got my expected setting of 15 degrees. So that's good. Hydraulic pressure, hit the system button here. I know I've got good hydraulic pressure. Uh, engine only anti-ice buttons, don't need that right now, so we'll go ahead and skip. Let's go ahead and put our V-speeds in, and uh, we'll do that by virtue of putting down the temperature and the desirable runway that we'll be using for takeoff. So departure is gonna be run by 2.7, hit execute there, then I come over to the perf button, hit takeoff. I've got 2.7 put in, the winds are calm, the temperature is 2.5 degrees Celsius, I've got 3019 as my uh, altimeter setting. Pressure altitude is, is confirmed at 792. 
car go a little further. Let me just put the FMS control in sync. That way the left and the right are talking to each other. We've got a dry runway condition, no slope. Hit the next button. Confirm inning ice is off. In fact, confirm flaps 15. It calculated our takeoff weight, our gross weight, and uh, our max takeoff weight of uh, 16,950 pounds. Our calculated takeoff fuel length is 2,576 out of a runway of 6,295. So we've got plenty of extra runway uh, in case we have to abort uh, for any reason we need, need that runway. Calculations show V1 of 92.95 for VR, 109 for V2, and VT of 140. Hit the send button. And as I do that, it sends the information right over to the primary flight display and has it queued up for me in case uh, I need to use any of those emergency speeds. So the takeoff data and takeoff field link from weight limits is confirmed. Avionics check and set. Okay, our clearance out here is pretty simple. It's uh, radar vectors to Golf Alpha Delta direct to our destination. So we're gonna take runway heading initially, which is back behind us, 270. I'll go ahead and turn the uh, flight director to takeoff takeoff mode. Initial altitude is 3,000 feet. And then we've got 430, uh, one zero minutes after departure. Squawk is 7253, I've got that put into the, uh, the primary box here. And uh, 210 as my uh, second frequency after tower. Tower is 125 decimal niner here in, uh, in Atlanta. Let's pull up the chart for the airport. We can see us here, and that's where we're going. It's real helpful for situational awareness to have the electronic charts on, on the uh, multifunction display. And everything I do here can also be done on the right-hand side as well. Avionics are checked and set. Uh, autopilot, let's go ahead and test it. We just turn the autopilot on and just hit the autopilot. Uh, dis disconnect button. I'll go ahead and reset the modes from the flight director to uh, take off, take off, 3,000 feet. And 3019 is our altimeter setting. That's uh, what we've been asked to, to put in here. You confirm 3019 once, twice, and three times across the board. Pressurization, another nice feature of the CJ4 is the integration between the flight management system and the pressurization control system. There's nothing to do. All you do is you put in your destination, in this case is a Kilo Hotel Sierra Delta, and it automatically puts a destination field elevation right here into the, um, uh, to the primary, actually, sorry, the multifunction display with all of our other information. That's confirmed as the destination elevation for our destination, 1193, 1190, close enough for what we're doing. Okay, pressurization is verified and set. ICAS, check. ICAS is good. Aft divider doors are closed. And flip the checklist over to the taxi. And with that, I think we're ready to taxi. So if you're ready to go, let's get this airplane headed to the runway and go do some flying.